Okay, here's the first of the manual digitising tutorials I will be making. And um, so you can see that I've opened my software and I've gone to the picture view. I like to use a picture to um, work with of some sort. And so I'll open one. And I've gone into the Benina Heart folder, which is in your My Designs folder. And you'll notice it says no items match your search. That's because they're not bitmaps, so we need to drop down to the all picture files and they'll come up. Now I'm just going to do a very simple shape today to start showing you some of the digitizing tools. So we'll select just a heart, which is just a heart outline, and we'll open that. We don't need to do any artwork preparation because we're manually digitizing. So we can go straight to design view. You'll notice down the bottom here, we've got a choice of an outline stitch or a fill stitch and a choice of colour. You can watch my little video on colour management to find out how to select your colours. That's on YouTube at the moment and I'll be putting it on the website soon. The software defaults to the step fill or if you want you can select an outline and it defaults to the single run outline. I'm going to just use a fill stitch at the moment, so to select the fill stitch you just click on fill. You have a choice of different fill stitches, satin, step, fancy, black work, etc. Um, I'm going to leave it on the standard step fill at the moment. There's also a choice of different step fills and I'll show you how to choose those in another video. So we'll just use the standard step fill and I'm going to use the default green colour that your software uses because it's nice and bright. Now if we come up here we have our digitizing tools and you can see that the auto digitizing tools are not available because we didn't prepare the artwork and underneath those we've got an open object tool, a closed object tool, a block digitizing tool, a circle tool and a rectangle tool. Now I'm going to use the closed object tool today because we have a, an object that is completely enclosed. Okay, so a shape is, an, is a closed object, a line is an open object. Okay, now so to, we select our tool that we're going to use, which is the closed object tool, by left clicking on it. And you'll notice when I left click, I'll just do it over here, I'll get a green flash on my cursor, and when I right click, I'll get a red flash. Just backspace out of those. So as I go around you'll see whether I'm left clicking or right clicking. And I'll try to remember to tell you as well. A left click does a straight line and a right click does a curved line. So you need to use the right click to go around the curves but you'll need to use a left click at any points because you need a straight line to change direction. So if we start here at the point of the heart at the top here and left click, then we can right click around the shape. And just, um, you'll notice a line appearing around the shape and also little nodes everywhere you click. You can see there I've left a gap a little bit too far. If I zoom in I'll show you. Because I left the gap quite away, the curve line has gone outside the curve. What I can do here is backspace, and that will remove this um, node that I put there. And then I can come back to here and right click again, and I'm keeping fairly close to the line. But don't worry too much because you can move these nodes later on. Okay, I'll just go back to show all and work my way down. Now this is fairly straight this line here so I could left click down here and left click at the point and left click and then I'm starting to go into a curve again so I start to right click again around the curve. You don't need to click on top of the first 
node you made, the software will work out that it needs to fill this gap in here between the last one you digitised. So just when you've got right round, just press your enter button and the object will fill with stitches. I'll just go back to one to one. So the object's now filled with stitches in the step pattern. Now also the other thing to remember is a large object like this will need underlay and what I had done at the beginning was also select the auto underlay. So if there's a little box around it, it's selected and that means the software is put in underlay. And I'll just go over to our film strip. At the moment it's just showing that one object that I've digitised in green. But if I click on here, we'll show the individual objects. It doesn't show a separate object for the underlay. But you know if you've got it, if you, you can check by um, hiding the picture. And if you zoom in to a small section of your object really closely, you can see that you've got stitches running in this direction here. That's the fill stitch. And you've got also stitches running in that direction, which is the um, underlay. You can also change the size of the design after we've digitised it. So if we f think that we'd like a smaller heart than the original picture was, we could have resized the picture and digitised a smaller heart, or we can take an existing design that's already got the stitch data and resize it. And to do that, we select it. And you'll notice there are little black marks around the design. That means it's selected. To resize you need to grab hold of one of the corner ones. Before I do that I'll just go down here. This tells us the width of the design and the height of the design in millimetres. So it's 95.4 wide and 72.7 .7 high. Over here we have the number of stitches in the design, 6907. You'll notice when I resize it that that will change. So um, you also, when you hold your cursor above the corner um, marker there, it shows you the X and Y width and heights there as well. Just left click and drag the corner marker in and you'll see a line of around the shape that gets smaller and that's how it, the size it's going to end up when you let go of your left mouse key. So I'll just let go there and that's resized the design. So if we go down to the bottom here now, the width is 59.3 and the height is 45.1 and we only have 2827 stitches. Now that changed the size proportionally, that is the width and height um, changed proportionally. You can also change just the width or just the height and you do this by left clicking on the centre markers. So if we're going to change the width, one of the side centre markers and drag it in. So I've got a narrow heart. If we're going to change the height, we grab the centre marker and we can either pull it up or drag it in. And we've got a longer heart. I'll just undo those two before I move on to the next part. We can rotate the design as well. To rotate the design, just left click on it again after it's, after it's been selected. And you'll notice these little corner markers are no longer blocks, they're clear. Now if we grab hold of one, you'll see a diagonal arrow and left click and drag and you can turn the heart shape to any angle you like. The other markers on here are the distorting markers and if you pull the middle markers you can actually distort the shape of the heart and you can do this top or bottom. So you can get all sorts of interesting shapes that way. Next video I'll show you how to change the shape with the reshape tool. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you.